And welcome to our global worship weekend, wherever you're tuning in from. We are so thankful that you're tuning in today. Now, this weekend is Canadian Thanksgiving. And so we spend the time getting together with family and friends and sharing what we're thankful for. And so if you can put in the chat one thing you're thankful for. And so Sonia, what's one thing you're thankful for? I am thankful for the beautiful colors of fall. And we have the privilege of sharing this amazing scenery with you today. This is not a green screen, even though some of you might think it is. This is life in Canada, and I'm so thankful for where I live today. And so put in the chat what you're thankful for, and you can share out this broadcast. It's going all around the world, and you can share it with a friend today. Welcome them to join us for this worship weekend. One of the things we're so thankful for is the partners, the people we get to partner with around the world. And one of our partners is h 2 for All. We've been joining with them with a special project in Moato, Uganda, where they've been doing a farm project. And so we've been a part of that, helping to purchase some of the trees, helping to get involved with some of the work um, that is going on there. And so I want you to check out this video with our partner h 2 for All. I am standing in Mawoto village, where last year, Thanks to H2O for All, our community has grown so much. We are healthier and happier. The village and the education center now have access to safe water. Access to water changes everything. The need for food has always been a concern. Where there is no water, there are no crops. But with the help of H2O for All, the second phase of the Mawoto Village project was to provide food security plan. With access to safe water, we can harvest water from the solar pumps to irrigate our crops. Last year, we were able to plant 200 banana plants and over 50 fruit trees. Soon, we will be able to see the fruits of our labor by harvesting oranges, lemons, jackfruit, mangoes, avocados, corn, granuts, and beans. This amazing project will continue to provide children and staff with healthy and sustainable food for many years. Safe water and a reliable food source have changed our lives for the better. With further help from H2O for All, we look forward to the third phase of the project. We want to be trained to learn modern agriculture, plant vegetables, and to farm animals. For the first time, we feel empowered to be an independent community. In Swahili, we say Asante San. Thank you to our friends and neighbors from across the world who will support H2O for all. Because of you, our village is flourishing with safe water to drink and nutritious food to eat. We hope you come visit us in Uganda soon. What an encouragement to see what's happening on the ground. I remember when my son Nathan started to raise funds for these trees, I couldn't imagine that we would be seeing the first harvest already. So I wanna thank you for each and every one of you that give on a regular basis to C365. When you give to this ministry, you're not only supporting this digital ministry, raising up leaders to start groups all around the world, but you're also supporting amazing works like this. And so we just wanna thank you. If you'd like to give to this ministry, you can just go to church365.ca slash give and you can give a donation today. We are so thankful for each and every one of you. Now this weekend, it being Thanksgiving weekend, we have some Canadian worship coming to you all the way from the East Coast of Canada. Louisville Baptist Church is partnering with us and we are just so thankful for them to bring us into worship, bring us in God's presence. And so as they begin to lead us, I want you to really enter and I want you to worship along with us. You can sing out with the lyrics that are on the screen and just allow God's presence to touch you today. And so Lord, we are so thankful for what you're about to do. You are so good to us, Lord, and we are thankful that you're about to move in each of our lives today and so move mightily today we pray in the name of Jesus amen
Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, He is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shepherd. The king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. You are. Pastor Sonia here. I'm so excited you've joined us for our Global Worship Weekend. I'm joining you from Georgetown, Ontario by this beautiful lake and it's Thanksgiving weekend. We are so thankful for you and we would love to hear where you're tuning in from today. So if you can write in the chat the city or the country that you're joining us from, we'd love to say hi to you. I'm bringing you the last message today in our four-part sermon series on insecurity. The last few weeks, we've been looking at four different biblical characters and the challenges they faced as they tried to overcome their own insecurities. 
Today we're going to be looking at the life of Peter. And so Peter was somebody that was so tenacious, so on fire for God, and yet we find him in the last chapter of John struggling after the death of Jesus. We know that Peter was struggling with the failure of denying Jesus as his Lord at the time that Jesus was arrested. And so when we come to this passage in John chapter 21, we find Peter not out doing ministry, not healing the sick, not caring for the poor, not sharing the gospel, but he's back at his career fishing. And this is where we see Jesus appearing to his disciples. There's actually seven of them in this passage. It's the, by the Sea of Tiberias. And when he approaches them, this is not his first time appearing to them. Actually, they've seen Jesus on two other occasions. They've seen that he's risen from the dead. They've been able to touch him. They physically know that he is alive and yet Jesus finds them not doing ministry. Can you imagine for Jesus, he had raised up these 12 disciples, he told them everything that was gonna happen and that he was gonna pass the ministry on to them and yet after he has risen from the dead, he finds them stuck not able to move forward. And you know, so many of us can find ourselves stuck in our lives. God has calls on each of us to do different things. There's things that you were born to do that no one else will do in their lifetime. There's things that God has put in you from the time that you were conceived that he has called you to do. And often what happens in our life is we can get stuck and fixated on the wrong moment. And so this is what was happening with Peter is that even though he knew that Jesus had called him the rock, he knew that Jesus had told him that he would build his church on, G on Peter and his ministry. And yet we find Peter, he just can't move forward. And so this entire passage is actually about the restoration of Peter. And what I love about this passage is actually how Jesus so lovingly restores Peter. He doesn't come in with shame or condemnation or try to beat him up for his mistakes, but he comes in and then he brings him to refocus to the right moment. And so as we read this passage, I want you to try to remember what moment Jesus is taking Peter back to. So this is John chapter 21. It says, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out, got into their boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net because of the large number of fish. Now, I don't know if you recognize this story, but this is not the first time that Jesus did this miracle. This is actually a repeat. So Jesus is doing a repeat of the calling that he gave to Peter. If you turn in your Bibles another time, you can look it up in Luke chapter five, you'll actually find the story where Jesus first calls Peter and it's almost the exact same scenario. Jesus finds him fishing, he can't find any fish. He tells him to throw his net over the boat and the nets are filled with fish. And at that moment, can you imagine, here's Peter and he's kind of running, he's not doing what he is called to do. He's back to his old career and here comes Jesus and he appears to him and he does it through reenacting this miracle from the past. I believe in that moment, something in Peter must have come alive. I wanna share a moment from my own life with you when God kind of gave me one of those God moments. Growing up, um, I really loved art and I loved art history. And so in high school, I took every single course that you could think of that had to do with art. I had one art teacher in particular that I loved listening to her, her history lessons. She was such a good teacher and part of why she was such a good teacher is many of the sites that she would talk about in her history classes, she had actually been to. So it was like hearing the firsthand account as she described the mosaics and all this beautiful artwork and the history behind all of these places. It was if it had come alive. And I remember as a teenager thinking to myself, you know, one day I wanna see these amazing sights. I wanna travel the world. I wanna see this beautiful artwork. And not long after I had an opportunity, um, our, our high school class was given the opportunity to go to Greece and see some of these amazing historical sites. And I remember my best friend and I were so excited. We were gonna go together. It was gonna be the time of our life. And I remember taking the form home to my parents and they were not against me necessarily traveling, 
but I learned very quickly that our family didn't have that type of money for that kind of trip. And I remember as a teenager that something that day went dormant in my life, that ability to dream, the ability to desire something more in my life became dormant. Fast forward 15 years later, um, my husband and I were pastoring overseas at an international church and it was our 10th anniversary and he decided let's go somewhere to celebrate our marriage. So we took a trip to Turkey, to Istanbul, and as we're in that city, not remembering that this was one of the sites I'd wanted to see, I stumbled across the Hagia Sophia. And I remember that moment standing in that museum and seeing the beautiful artwork, the mosaics, and seeing the pictures of Jesus that were hundreds, possibly thousands of years old, and just being overwhelmed that I couldn't believe that I was there. I remember in that moment just feeling the presence of God so tangible, and I felt the Holy Spirit speaking to me, Sonia, I brought you here simply to let you know that I love you and my dream, your dreams are important to me. And from that moment, I realized that, you know, for so many years, I'd been living kind of with this poverty mentality, that there were certain things when I was going to dream about accomplishing things or doing things for God, there'd be something that was holding me back. I would say, I can't do this because of my economic status, or I can't do this because of my education, or I can't do this because I'm not qualified. And in that moment, I remember that day, it was as if something was brought back alive in me. Even when I posted pictures on social media, I remember I had dozens of friends commenting saying, I've never seen your smile so bright before. And I believe that moment with Peter by the lakeshore, it was the same. You know, he had been so fixated on his failure. He was so fixated on how he had failed Jesus. And yet Jesus wasn't worried about how he failed him. You know, sometimes we can put a tremendous guilt we can put condemnation on ourselves that God is not putting on us. You know, Jesus knew that Peter was going to deny him and he knew that Peter was gonna struggle with it. And so he actually even warned Peter to say, you know what, tonight you're gonna to deny me three times. And you know, God knows our every mistake. He knows the trauma that we've experienced. He knows how people have mistreated us. He knows that moment that you're stuck in. And God wants to say to you today to stop fixating on the wrong moment. You know, so many of us, we fail to accomplish what we've been born to do because we get stuck and fixated on the wrong moment. And so Peter, in this moment where Jesus is trying to restore him, he brings him back, not to his failure, but he brings him back to his moment of his calling. And I believe that was a moment where something came back alive in Peter. When we look forward into Acts, we see just a short time later, Peter is taking the role of ministry again, and he's leading the church. And that day of Pentecost, Peter preaches and more than 3,000 people come to the faith in one day. And that is just the beginning of the New Testament church and the miracles that happened within it. And so I wanna encourage you today, maybe like Peter, as I've been sharing today, you find yourself that you've been stuck in a certain moment. Maybe you've been stuck about a trauma that's happened to you. Maybe you're stuck in something where you failed or you have regret. And I wanna encourage you that God doesn't want you to fixate on that moment that there is a moment of hope for you today. There is something that God wants you to turn your focus, to turn it back to Him, and to walk into the purposes and plans that God has for your life. I'm gonna pray for you this afternoon, for today on this worship weekend, and I'm just wanting and believing that God is gonna do a miracle in your life. God, I thank you for every person that is with us today. God, I thank you, Lord, for the call and the purposes and the things that you've put in their life that only they were born to do, God. I just pray for every hindrance of their past, Lord, things, maybe whether it be trauma, whether it be failure, whether it be hurt. God, I pray that you would expose that today, God, that you would bring to light the things that they're focusing on the wrong things, God, and you would turn their eyes back to you, Jesus. Lord, I bless the work you're doing in them. Give them strength, Lord, give them boldness, and I thank you for them in Jesus' name. In a moment, we're gonna enter back into worship. And as I said earlier, this is Canadian Thanksgiving, and there's so much in our life to be thankful for. You don't have to be Canadian to celebrate with us. But as we enter into worship, I want you to come with an attitude of gratefulness, to think about something you can be thankful for. Maybe like I was talking in this message, you've been fixated on the wrong thing. This is your moment to put your focus back on Jesus, to give him your praise and to be thankful for what he is doing in your life.
Thank you for joining us today. We would love to have you join us again for our next Global Worship Experience on November 13th and 14th. You're not gonna wanna miss it, so make sure you put it in your calendars and join us next month. We also wanna invite you to connect with us at C365. You can message us on WhatsApp by scanning the QR code or messaging us directly. Or we would also love to have you join a small group. We have num a number of new small groups starting where people are connecting online, some are in person, and we would love to connect you. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, we will find a small group for you. And lastly, we would love to have you join in our daily reading plan. This is one of the best parts about being part of the C365 family. In these Bible plans, we're able to chat, comment, ask questions, and grow in God's word together. So as we end the service today, I want you to check out this promo video for our next Bible reading plan. <laughs> 